today I'm going to be running a real world range test on the electric XP trike. Just waiting for the battery to finish charging up inside so I can have a freshly charged battery. And I'm going to try to duplicate the conditions that electric ran when they did their range test. I'm going to be on mostly flat ground, very few bumps. With my weight and the weight of my tools and water and a few things I'm carrying on the bike, should be right at about 180 pounds, uh, which is the same weight that electric ran. I got the tires all set at a approximately 36 psi which again is what electric claims uh, they did back down on the river trail where i've done range testing before looking at electric's range claims i printed them out from the web page on the xp trike 48 volt battery 14 amp hours with pedal assist set to four and using throttle only they estimate 25 miles so this is the test i'm going to do you know so hopefully it doesn't take too long it's going to take me a couple of hours getting started a little bit later than i want it to which is good because it's gotten hotter it's about 90 degrees and there should be very few walkers and hikers but it is going to be a little bit uncomfortable to ride in 90 degree weather for a couple of hours luckily i'm doing throttle only so i'm not going to be working too hard and as long as the air temperature is below my body temperature i should be cooling in theory right one of the disadvantages for a trike is uh, oftentimes you see at trailheads rocks set up to keep things other than bikes and hikers from getting through and i think i'm going to be just a little bit too wide to get through this rock major lifting here to get it up and over ah oh, there we go i'm going to pedal to where the trail starts to really make sure that i'm only capturing the flat section it looks like they released some water from the from the dam upstream so there's a lot of water flowing through the rio grande today which Hopefully it will make for some evaporative cooling. I set this microfiber on the seat because with it in the back of the truck, it got quite warm. So I'm at pedal assist zero, making sure I'm not wasting any battery. My voltage is at 54.3. That's pretty close to full. The charger was showing green. The voltage does, does drop a little bit as you, as you let the battery sit, but that's pretty close to full. So here we are at the start. It's mostly level, a few curves. Beware of snakes, uh-oh. I am going to use Strava so I can get a more precise GPS based mileage and so I can get an estimate of what the elevation change is over the course of this ride. So here we go, it's throttle only now. So I've set it on cruise to try to reduce variation. So it looks like I'm seeing anywhere from 2 to 4 amps with the throttle fully open and I'm on cruise control. This grass that's growing between the cracks. That started coming out, I guess, because of the rain. So that is going to make for some, some bumpiness. Still, the current draw seems fairly low. I might be out here more than two hours. And getting past these bridges on cruise control is a little bit, little bit sketchy. At about 30 minutes in, I've gone 6.4, 6.5 miles. And my voltage under load is just under 52 volts. Now, one of the reasons I decided to do this as a throttle only test is that this type of bike without gears, I think it's gonna be used with throttle only more often. And also because it's, it's a bike more for recreational riding, more than exercise, and to help people regain their mobility. There's people with old injuries. I've heard of some people that have lost their license, you know, because they, they're not allowed to drive, because they have some kind of physical disability that makes it difficult for them to get around in a car. A trike like this will allow you to go shopping, you know, buying groceries, visiting neighbors or, or close relatives. So if you're replacing transportation, you care less about the pedaling and you're going to be using the throttle more. And at the lower speeds and the way this motor is geared, it seems to be pretty efficient with throttle only. But we'll keep going here, see where we end up on this range test. Approximately 16.9 miles in, my open circuit voltage without load is 50.4 volts or so according to strava i've gone 15.3 miles according to the bike i've gone 16.9 miles choose who you want to believe another thing to note is how ridiculously inaccurate the energy bar is on on this bike and and many e-bikes you know supposedly i've used 10 percent of the battery I've, I've only dropped one bar and i've gone almost 19 miles after about an hour and a half of riding, the seat does feel like it's starting to become a little bit hard. I had only ridden it, you know, very short rides and it felt was comfortable enough. But if you're going to do hour and a half, two hour rides, you might need to add uh, some cushioning on top of the seat or, or get a different seat altogether. I don't know, but pretending I'm Aladdin out here on a magic carpet. That's a nice thing about a trike that it's, it's so stable that you can just stand and stretch and, you know, be in different positions. You don't have to worry about balancing the bike. All right, that's enough stretching. Two hours in. Let me get across this bridge without dying. 
I'm at 25 miles if, if I believe the trip meter at about half of the battery capacity if I believe the energy bar. I'm at just under 47 volts under load. If I were to believe the energy bar, this would mean that I could go another 25 miles and hit 50 miles of range, but that's not gonna happen. So again, I think the energy bar is not very accurate. If I look at Strava, I'm at about 23 miles versus 25 miles on the trip meter. And part of that is that the Strava GPS doesn't uh, account for me winding back and forth like this. The truth is likely somewhere in between the trip meter on the bike and the GPS based distance. It was very easy to exceed the claimed range from electric. Although if I look at the GPS distance, I'm at 23 miles. I still need another couple miles to go before I exceed electric's claim of 25 miles on throttle only pedal assist four. But I think it's gonna be very easy to exceed it even on the GPS based estimate. Even though I was hoping to only be out here for two hours or so, it looks like I'm gonna have at least maybe another 30 minutes worth of riding. The longer the better, I guess, cause that's a good sign that the range is, is better than we had hoped for. The other nice thing about the battery performance on the XP trike, 26 miles in, I'm still being able to maintain 13.6 miles per hour, basically the full speed of the pedal assist four. And I'm not seeing any degradation in the battery performance uh, even this far into the test. Just over 30 miles in, about two hours and 20 minutes, energy bar showing about three segments left, suggesting I'm at a, I have about 30% of the battery left. My under load voltage is under 46 volts now. I expect to get down to about 43 volts, 42 volts maybe, before I have a big drop in power and not able to maintain speed anymore. I'm supposed to be able to hit 14 miles an hour with full throttle in a pedal assist four, but the peak I'm seeing on flat ground is about 13.7 miles an hour. And I think at least one other subscriber had commented that he was seeing about 13.7 seven miles an hour peak on flat ground i'm not seeing the expected 14 mile an hour with full throttle but the difference between 14 miles an hour and 13.7 is is very small and i don't really feel the need to be able to go much faster on on a trike i'm okay with it but it is something that electric may need to look at tweaking on their controller if uh, the current is just a little bit below what it should be to get you to that 14 miles an hour at close to two and a half hours in, I've gone 32.4 miles according to the trip meter. According to Strava, Strava says I've gone, yeah, 29.5 miles. The energy bar, you know, because I've sat here resting for a tiny bit, it's back up to 50%. Voltage is at 46.6. So it looks like I gotta keep going. So far, easily exceeding Electric's range claims. And the wind has picked up. I'm getting a tailwind in this direction and a decently strong headwind coming back. Another update, I'm at about two hours, 45 minutes in. According to the trip meter, I've gone 36.4 miles. I'm down to two energy bars, dropping below 45 volts under load. Still looks like I got a ways to go. I expect another two to three volt need to drop before I start seeing a major loss in power. We'll keep going. It's like the energy bunny this bike even though the conditions are pretty good today for this test it's not perfect the the fact that I have a strong headwind in one direction is not completely made up for with the tailwind in the other direction uh, the temperatures are, are higher than what batteries are happiest at. you know batteries are really happy in the upper 70s mid, mid to upper 70s just like humans kind of but by being in the mid 90s uh, that's a little bit of a, a negative impact on, on the battery and every single one of these expansion joints that you see here even though the concrete surface is smooth every single one of the expansion joints i can feel through through the tires um, some a little bit some quite a bit and uh, that's obviously uh reducing the efficiency of the rolling resistance uh, or increasing the rolling resistance every time you hit one of those little bumps there are some curves some windy bits uh, to this trail. Anytime you're turning, you're also reducing uh, the efficiency. The tires are scrubbing some speed when you're in the turns. It's pretty surprising how well the bike is doing. I'm also having no trouble maintaining top speed, 13.7 miles an hour or so, even with a battery this far down in the voltage, these many miles in. It's a good sign that battery controller are well designed, well calibrated. Good job, Electric. I'm very impressed with this uh, real range. Uh, I got a lot of heats for my theoretical range calculation 
conditions uh, on my XP 3.0 indicating very high ranges just looking at the amps drawn by the motor and the theoretical capacity of the battery for the track I decided to do a real world test before doing any kind of theoretical assumptions so people are more comfortable with what this actually means and I'm gonna go back even though now I've got several hundred miles on it battery is probably not to its full capacity anymore maybe down to like 90% of the initial capacity but I'll go back and do this type of test on the XP 3.0 and compare its real world performance like I'm doing with the XP trike. Electric's range assumptions or range claims on their website seem to be very conservative. I'm going way past the range that I was expecting. Oh, I'm down to one energy bar. We're probably getting close. Still with one energy bar, I'm maintaining 13.5, 13.5, 13.4 miles per hour. That's very impressive. Finally, at 43.4 miles, I just all of a sudden noticed about a mile an hour drop in uh, the top speed that I can maintain. I'm under 42 volts, under load. So I think we're getting very close to the end here. Right here at 43.6 miles. Oh yeah, De definitely cutting out, trying to get up this little hill here. Well, let's see how it does on the way back. Got about a mile to get back to the beginning. I can feel the bike surging, trying to maintain the set cruise control. Once you hit less than 42 volts, it seems like the controller starts trying to protect the battery pack by cutting how much current it's pulling from it. And I'm at 3 hours and 20 minutes. So that's plenty of range. My butt's going to be sore tomorrow. Looks like right at 44 miles on the indicator and 40 miles on Strava, GPS confirmed. So that's that's 15 miles more, 15 to 15 to 19 miles more than Electric's claimed range for this condition. Electric claims that on a flat surface, minimal stops, not too many bumps, 180 pounds of load on the bike, you should see 25 miles of range and we were way over that. I'm really happy to see Electric being conservative with their range claims and range estimates compared to what I was able to do on a real world ride. It's so easy for electric bike manufacturers to exaggerate specs, especially range. I'll record a bit more right at the end, see if I was able to make it under power. It seems like I suffered some kind of puncture. This tire had lost a lot of air, it's almost flat. So even more surprising that I was able to get through that range test and have such good results with this tire being low and flat for who knows how long. Probably not too long. Having to push the bike the last quarter mile or so, I do still have a little bit of juice in the battery so I can uh, let the voltage recover then give it a little, a little thrust with the throttle here and there to help me. But I'm wondering now, if did Electric include slime in these tires? I think one of my subscribers says he found that there was no slime in the tires. And before doing this range test, I thought I better add some slime to the tires just in case. If you find this type of content useful, please consider subscribing and hit that like button to be notified of future content.